Hey everyone, uh, welcome to my Prusa i3 build log. Uh, I think this is build number eight. We're going to go through kind of a quick configuration settings on how to uh, configure your firmware and upload it to uh, your RepRap 3D printer. Things you'll need is a our, uh, IDE, I'm using Arduino 0023, and a firmware. For me, I'm using Marlin, the latest release from the Git. Um, just going to kind of go through the really brief and quick things here uh, just to um, just to kind of give you an overview on how to get your printer at least up and running. Also, I've tried to record this about three or four times, so and each time it's failed. So uh, this is going to be kind of I think I've got it down to making this pretty quick. I'm going to go into advanced settings later on, um, and this might be a second video. So first thing you can do is open up your IDE or open your firmware in your IDE. Um, and you're going to go over to the configuration tab. This is where all the information you're going to be modifying is located. Don't have to worry about any of these other tabs. Um, big thing here is at the top there's some uh, information where you can enter in about what this firmware is. I suggest you use it as you keep going through and making modifications and testing. It, you're going to have multiple copies of the same firmware. This is a nice way of being able to know is what exactly you're doing or using this firmware for or what you've changed. Um, first thing is baud rate. This is just how the communication speed between your host and your uh, controller board. A uh, big thing is is just make sure that these two values are identical, the host software and the firmware. So take this, write this down if needed. Um, also look on your what kind of electronics you have. Uh, mine uses the 250,000 but other sometimes uses the other value. And if you wanted to use the other value, what you would do is you would comment this out by putting two forward slashes. You can see that it actually changes color. And you would delete the forward slashes from the other one, from the one below it. So we're going to comment that one out and use the 250. Next is you're going to change what motherboard you're using. Uh, I'm using, I said, ramps 1.4. Don't freak out just because you don't see RAMS 1.4 on here. RAMS 1.3 and 1.4 are identical pinned wise so if you're looking at your firmware don't worry just look for 1.3 and you'll be fine. I only have one extruder bed and fan so I'm going to be using pin layout 33. Here we've got our thermal settings. Here is a list of your thermistors that you can use. Most common is the 100k thermistor uh, but always make sure to go back through and see exactly what thermistors you're using and also even find out what uh, if you know uh, what kind or what brand or part number because some of them are listed on here and as you can see like temperature sensor 0 which is extruder 1 or extruder 0 in the in the code or just the one extruder I have set to 7 that's because I'm using a Budish nozzle that has this exact Honeywell um, thermistor sensor one and two there I'm not using so I'm just have it to zero and my bed I'm actually using a 10k thermistor so that's why I've set it to four top tier 10k thermistor rest of this information here is pretty much it uh, don't worry about um, uh, more advanced uh, what I would suggest is here under PID settings for your extruder just comment this out we'll get into this later but here you can just cut right through into your mechanical settings here, same thing, don't worry, all this stuff, just leave this as is. We'll, we'll modify things as we go through, as we come back. Um, here, a little bit on this inverting direction. Um, this is a software way of reversing the direction your motor goes. So say your motor goes, uh, you want it to go to the right, but it goes to the left. You can do two things. One is go onto your board and reverse the pins. Basically, take the connector, rotate it 180 degrees, and put it back on the board. The other way to do it is software based, you just invert the logic. Either way is fine. This is how this is where you could do it inside software. And actually one of these is wrong. I know from looking at it. So I'll just kind of take you through and how you would uh, modify it and how, how what you need to do from there. End stops, we want them to be minimum, at least on my machine, if you want them to go to zero zero zero. And this is all just advanced things as well. Now we're actually into uh, still under the movement settings. We're looking at our E steps. Now these are step values X, Y, Z, and E meaning extruder. Um, to get these values, uh, use 
a helpful tool. It's a web-based calculator. It's just look up Prusa calculator on Google, and this is actually what you'll find. Um, here we go into steps per millimeter for the belt, and you input your settings into here. For me, I have a 1.8 degree angle and a 16 step. This is the most common setup right now. For me, I'm using a T2.5 uh, belt with a 12 tooth uh, gear on the motor. And that results in a 106.666 blah 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 uh, steps per millimeter. Here's the long way if you want to calculate out if you don't see your information here. But in most cases, most of the common stuff is inside here. Um, you take this value and you input it into your x, y values. Your x and your y should be the same as long as you have the same setup, which in most cases you do. For your z, you go back into this calculator as well, and the same thing, we've got a steps per millimeter lead screw. Same thing, 1.8, 16 lead screw pitch. Now, the calculator doesn't have M5 listed on here, which is fine, so you have to actually go break out the pen and paper and do the old the, do the method the long method here. This actually results in a, in 4,000 steps per millimeter. So, I would suggest just doing this so that you know in a sanity check. But if you want to, uh, I3 with a five millimeter lead pitch and your standard 1.8 and 16 is going to result in 4,000 steps per millimeter. Gear ratio, do not worry about. Gear ratio is, uh, as long as your threaded rod is connected right to your motors, it's a one to one. So you go into our, firm, our firmware again, and then for the Z, we put 4,000. For the E, we're going to go, I just say throw in 650. We're going to have to calibrate this. This is just a good kind of middle of the road value for depending, independent of what kind of extruder that you're using. So just throw in 650, and we'll come back to that later. Feed rates, I did modify the Z down to 2. It was set to 5 before. I just found in my setup that if I had anything above 2, my Zs would chatter. It would be almost like too fast, like they were overspeeding. I'm not exactly sure why or what the purpose cause of that, but I found 2 is just fine for me. Other than that, you should be set to go. There's nothing else in here. So what you're going to do here is, once you've added those things, you're going to go at the top, Tools. Make sure your board is set to the whatever your board is. Mine is the 2560 Arduino, and my serial port is set to COM7, which is hooked up to there. You'll hit the upload, compile, and upload button, and it'll push the software to there. So that's the end of this. I'll we'll cut to the next part. All right. So now we're in our host software here. Um, I'm gonna just take you up here. We're gonna what I was talking about before: printer settings, configuration, printer settings. You can see here, we want the port, which is COM7, which is hooked up to our, our control. Our baud rate, this is the important part right here I was talking about before, and the rest of it's fine. Uh, you can, uh, the, the, in, at least in Repetier, it, it all depends on what, uh, um, what host software you're using, but the baud rate, I just wanted to point out, is right here to make sure that these all connect and talk nice to each other. So we've got our host software here um, heating up the extruder right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through the X, Y, and Z movements just to double check to make sure that they are uh, working correctly as well as the home. Um, next that we're also going to do too is we're going to extrude um, a certain particular length, uh, particular length of material and we're going to see if that's exactly how much uh, uh, was extruded. Uh, but first we're going to test these axes. So I'm going to switch to the other camera here and just kind of go through um, go through it so you can see the printer actually running. Alright, so now we're actually at the printer and you can see here I've got my host software. If you can go. What we're going to do here first is we're going to move the extruder, uh, we're going to move everything in a, a particular direction. So uh, first things first is we're going to move the X. I want it to move in the positive direction, so it should move to the right. So I'm going to do it one, and you can see there it actually it's moving to the left. Okay, so this is where I was talking about before with the actual. We'll have to go back, and you can we can invert the axis one of two ways: software based, or we can go to the top of the board and. 
swap around the connectors if we wanted to. But I'm just going to do it software based to just to kind of show you through. So next one is Y. So we're actually going to go negative, so which means it should go away from us. Well, now yeah, here's a little here's a little thing right here. So you see that when it first started up, it's actually at zero, and it reads zero right away. Now because we have that it, inside the firmware, we have the soft stop or the firmware uh, set to zero. Um, the firmware actual uh, stop is at zero. It won't let me go to any value below zero. So I've seen people talk men mention this before where they go, well, I can't move it, I can't move it, and that's because, well, you're trying to go below zero and the firmware says no. So it will go 10 forward. So this would mean 10 positive, it should move toward us. There we go. And now because the software thinks we're at 20, I should be able to move back 10. There we go, just fine. All right, with our Z's, I'm going to go up one millimeter and then we should move up. There we go. That's good. And now we're up to temperature. So I can extrude. I'm just going to extrude about five millimeters of filament and we should be able to see some filament come out here. There we go, good. We know then that at least that the extruder is going in the right direction. And depending on which one you're using, actually, the weights or the direct drive, this could be the case where you need to invert the E. So now we know that at least the X needs to be inverted. The other thing is we want to test is our um, is our end stops. Now I'm holding <laughs> I'm holding the tablet in my hand in one hand and then also you know hitting the button. Uh, for home and the other, I would suggest when you do this test, when you do the home test, is to put your finger on the home button and press the home button manually with your hand just to stop this, and uh, just to stop it itself. Don't let the actual part hit the end stop. I say that because if the settings are incorrect, your motors are going to keep pushing and it will keep going until well, something burns up. So always keep your hands near the main power plug as well as um, just being able to shut things down. So first thing we do is I'm going to home X. Actually, no, I'm not going to home X because I'll tell you what happens. Well, I'll do this, try to do this really fast. If I home X, I'm actually going to go in the, the opposite direction of where my end stop is. But we can test the, uh, we can test to make sure that the end stop works. So I'm going to hit home, it's going to go in the opposite direction, I'm just going to hit the uh, end stop by manually. So homing, there we go. So we know the end stop works, we just know that the access moves incorrectly. Um, y we know works, so if I hit Y, there you can see back there is the end stop. If I hit Y, it should move just fine. Perfect. And Z we know it, it works as well too. Fantastic. I'm going to raise it up by another 10 here. So, great. So we know at least that we need to go back into and we need to invert the X. Um, I'm going to take a break here and I'm going to set up the next step, which is how do we calibrate our actual um, extruder E steps. So, be back in a second. All right. So now we're going to calibrate our E steps. What I have done is measured from the bottom of your extruder here up a hundred millimeters and placed a mark. A piece of tape, it doesn't matter, just you gotta place just place something that would mark a hundred millimeters. Um, this is gonna at least tell us because what we're gonna do is we're going to extrude a certain particular amount of material and then we're gonna measure what the actual distance is between here and the top. So I've placed a mark at a hundred millimeters going into my firmware, or sorry, my host software here, and I'm going to extrude 50. So, go ahead, I'm going to extrude 50 millimeters of filament. You, so you can see here, 
and we'll see what the result is. This is also a good time too to, to kind of just watch this mark as it goes down. Um, I found that if you put a mark on the filament and then just watch it, you'll be able to see if by chance your um, extruder is skipping or if your filament is actually um, is being torn off rather than being extruded. It's just a good nice visual way of just watching it slowly move down. If you notice that it stops in a particular spot you might have some kind of jam up or you might have something something wrong with your uh, hot end or your extruder. It, it is important that you need to go through and make sure that the filament does not stop or get torn up because this will throw off your E-step calculations completely and you're just going to be ta chasing your tail. So uh, the extruder is stopped. What I'm going to do here next is I'm going to measure the distance here and show you the two changes that we need to make inside the firmware. Hey, all right, and we're back into the firmware here. So we're back into the firmware. First thing that we notice is that we have to, our X did not move in the proper direction. So we'll go back up here and we see invert and we see here invert direction is set to true. We want to just change this to false. If I spell false correctly. There. Great. Now we know now what we'll do is now the X should move in the proper direction is what we want it to. The next thing that we wanted to update was our E steps for our extruder. Now we have it set up at 650. Um, we measured out 100 millimeters of filament length and then we told it to extrude 50. Um, the end result was that it extruded out 38 here's the calculator, 38.913 uh, so that's how much uh, filament that we extruded out and, and we know how much we wanted to and how much it actually did. This is good because then we can go back to our nice awesome tool here and this is kind of in the tweaking calibration tweaking calibrations Here you can see we've got a demanded move length and the actual move length and our actual steps per millimeter so here is where we input that information we wanted to move 50 millimeters we actually moved 38.91 one three our actual steps per millimeter which is what we were using in our firmware here which was 650 650 so this calculates out and says hey your new steps per millimeter should be 835.196 we take this information here go back into our firmware input that in and we're set to go now this is it's important that you test this do this method a few times here go back and forth back and forth a couple times just to really hone it in I mean right now we've we've got a big window and we've narrowed it down and then we'll want to just keep narrowing it down to we're really comfortable with how much exactly was extruded out but from here you go you've got your settings you've you've got your basic firmware calibration settings um, next thing you want to do I mean this is I'll go into the next more detail later on here on um, some of the more advanced firmware settings but uh, from here you can go right into calibrating your slicing software and setting up that information there so thanks again for watching and I'm gonna go a little bit into advanced here next